Now, everybody's favourite guest on the mother of all talk shows joins us again tonight. She's a Lebanese woman of great courage and fortitude and eloquence and grace. She is Ghadi Francis, and we welcome her back to the mother of all talk shows. Ghadi, it's a painful time for your country, for your people. On the other hand, uh, the resistance from amongst your people is not just complete, but seems to be, to a remarkable extent, cross-communal, uh, cross-community, cross-ethnicity. It seems that Lebanon has come together almost like never before to repel the invader, which has crossed your border but hasn't made much progress. Is that how you see it? Hello, George. You're so kind. Uh, thank you for having me again. Uh, and thank you for all you do and your stances and your global voice on behalf of my people and the Palestinians for all these years. We appreciate you and all your work. You. Um, I want to start by telling you really honestly, I haven't been prouder to be Lebanese in my life. I'm so proud that I'm Lebanese in this moment. I'm so proud of the ethics. I'm so proud of the capabilities. I'm so proud of the resilience, of the persistence, of the, of the spirit of our people. You could see, everybody could see the footages coming out. Israel targets our hospitals, our kids, bombs with CPU, bunker busters with white phosphorus. It, does, it even actually caused an earthquake yesterday in South Lebanon. This is what Israel does to invade my country. And my country, men, we target military bases. We target Merkava tanks. We target the planes and the drones that kill our babies. And if and when they want to target or to retaliate, they give warnings and they do always deliver uh, in a way where they never breach an international law or a human law or a, a sky law or like any kind of religious uh, law uh, in humanity. As my people are being slaughtered in thousands and even throughout decades, in tens of thousands, and my land is being bombed and our civilian uh, buildings are being flattened, with all that has been done to our country, we remain ethical, we remain loyal to what life means to humanity, to land, to, to, to human beings, regardless of the fact that these human beings were brought from all around the world to squat in our land. I haven't been prouder. For three weeks, George, for three weeks, they've been trying with everything to enter Lebanon. And for three weeks, they weren't able to take anything from Lebanon. They were able to kill civilians and kids. They were able to assassinate people who were in Beirut in meeting rooms. But did they deter Hezbollah actually on the ground? Did they stop these southern villagers from protecting their land in South Lebanon? No. You can see them. They like resurrect. You could see the Israelis. They flatten uh, a mountain, they flatten a village, they bomb the whole entire village, and then they put their arms on the side and they rest and they parade and they take videos inside our homes, wearing our women's clothes, making fun of our memories and our lives. And then a few hours later in the night, Hezbollah fighters resurrect from under the rubble and attack them and deter them and send them back to um, a northern uh, occupied Palestine. I haven't been prouder. I'm so proud of us. And I, I know you started, it is a very tough time for my people. We are, th we are seeing death and destruction everywhere, but it is only through that very dark tunnel uh, that we are uh, able to reach the light of liberty and the light of justice for the native indigenous righteous people of this land. Ghadi, very moving and powerful indeed. Uh, tell me this, is it uh, true that Israel say they're only one week away from completing their ground mission 
in Lebanon and that they are preparing to withdraw. How humiliating a withdrawal would that be? I want to I wanna ask you a question, my turn, George. Is anything the Israelis say true? Have they said anything that was true? They're all about propaganda. <laughs> you know, they even said, yeah. I mean, this whole war was started on a lie, on a lie that was debunked one time, many times, on a lie of mass rape and beheaded babies. On a lie, we all know now about the Hannibal Directive about October 7, how the Nova Festival was attacked by their planes, how many of the cars was attacked by their planes. Many of the Israeli survivors from October 7 said that, and yet you could still hear that propaganda uh, perturbated all around the world because this is what they do. They lie and they have this multi-billion dollar machine of mainstream media all around the Western uh, media aligned with the US foreign policy and colonization that repeats the lies. And so whatever they say about their missions, that would always be a lie to me because they're going to try to picture it as an ended uh, mission. I want to ask you, what was their target from the beginning? Their target was to, as they say, to uh, return the settlers to northern occupied Palestine. And the end game, uh, they, they became uh, more. Haifa and even Tel Aviv and more places were attacked by the rockets. So they weren't able to um, to reach their target by returning or by like finishing that. Um, and they also said they want to destroy Hezbollah. They assassinated the leader, the 60 something year old leader that was in his office in a meeting. But these 100,000 fighters that are called Hezbollah just became angrier, they just became more persistent, and for them, ideologically, it became an existential war. They even turned them um, more dangerous, and the vengeance is screaming up high, and we are we can see it in the South. I mean, we are talking about this for the, in the history of all the movements, of all the resistance movements that have emerged in this region, and I'm talking about uh, secular, communist, uh, Palestinian, Arabists, all kinds of resistance movements in the history since they occupied Palestine. This is the first time that any resistance movement does around 50 operations in one day, including drone attacks, rockets, tank burning, uh, all kinds of uh, military uh, capacity is showed. So how how did they actually destroy Hezbollah? We can't see it. We can only see them uh, accumulating more and more and adding more numbers. And it is really in an accelerating uh, and ascending uh, order, if you could see that. This is uh, from one side. And from another side, it is the first time in the history of these resistance groups that someone actually attempts or says they will attempt uh, to assassinate an Israeli prime minister, and I'm talking about the attack uh, on uh, Benyamina uh, in, uh, in Qisaraya. These are all areas around Tel Aviv. These are all areas where Hezbollah drones were able to get there without the sirens, without being tracked, and to hit their target. They did not kill Netanyahu, but they sent him a message, and I'm sure that he's now himself a displaced uh, settler. So he wanted to return these displaced well, he, settlers he's to just, northern uh, Palestine, and yeah, he became displaced. He's just asked. <laughs> he's just asked President Biden for seven hundred thousand dollars to make his home safe from uh, from uh, resistance attack. That's just breaking in the last half hour. The American taxpayers' patience is never ending. Uh, tell me, I, I I said earlier in my introduction that Lebanon was, uh, and I've known Lebanon, as you know, since long before you were born. Uh, I, I've never known Lebanon to be uh, uh, as united as they are around this struggle. Have I got that right? Well, I wish. I want to be honest with you. It's good to boost the morale and speak and repeat things we want to, to, be, to hear. But actually on the ground, no, the Zionists have always worked on a part of the internal and the local society in Lebanon. They actually had some ties with Lebanese figures even before they occupied Palestine. And here I'm quoting the papers of Eliyahu Sasson, 
and the papers of the Zionists uh, inventors in, in our region. So the, the people who started this uh, occupation in Palestine, they always had ties with certain groups inside Lebanon as allies because they, they supposedly supposedly would help them against the other sects in Lebanon. They were the reason why we had civil war. And I'm sure you know how they were distributing this uh, propaganda sometimes and sometimes weapons and sometimes building up and even uh, aiding military wise some groups to kill other groups. So this is also being used. I am afraid, uh, George, that they are trying the Americans Directly. I, I don't want to only speak about Israel at that point. I mean, these are American planes. These are American ammunition. This is American impunity. Even when the Americans say it's not us, they're protecting it. And now, <laughs> according to what you just said, they're even going to build him a 700,000 uh, bunker <laughs> to continue killing us. So it's an American war here. The Americans in Lebanon are trying to establish something that is similar to what was in the 80s, as in to divide the community, to um, make it even more polarized, to start up problems and fires domestically. And we have people inside Lebanon that are always susceptible for that. But fortunately enough, because of the lessons of the 80s, because when they tried in the 80s, they failed. And when they tried to corner the resistance groups in the, in the 80s, I'm sure you know, they turned them into beasts. They did the they, they brought their Marines and the Marines got bombed in Beirut. There were assassinations in Beirut. These groups do not uh, stop when you oppress them. They become even angrier and it becomes more existential for them. So because we have this lesson of about the 80s, about these divisions, I think we have some wise people, even on the other side that are anti-resistance and inside the Lebanese army, we have some wise people who are telling them that if you repeat the 80s, you will uh, reap what uh, what you what you did last time uh you you didn't uh, really succeed i mean they even brought amin jmail he was a president he was pro israel he wanted to sign a treaty with israel and that did not work they had with them the army and the presidency and all the the government in lebanon and still the resistance won so they are trying the zionists and the americans and their proxies and also with the aid of some arabs some Gulf uh, nations, they are trying and working and funding uh, people and figures uh, who have erupted from nowhere into journalism or politics to spread that vibe in Lebanon. They are trying and constantly, and hopefully they will always fail, but they are trying. And finally, uh, how do people view the role of France? Uh, Macron uh, blows hot and cold, of course. But when he's blowing hot, he's really quite uh, severe uh, about Netanyahu. And he seems to have shelled out a fair bit of money today, uh, a total of, I think, uh, a billion uh, euros from France to help the people of Lebanon. Is this sincere, do you think? Well, it is. there is a certain tie always between the French and the Lebanese. Uh, I mean, some Lebanese are actually proud to call themselves a Francophone country. And uh, Macron himself is a smart politician. He's trying to build his presence in that. And I think regardless of the alignment, regardless of the, the stances we are seeing from Europe and most of the time even complicity, whether it's in aiding or funding or giving ammunitions or planes or weapons or even voting uh, against uh, make, like trying them. But I think the, the French are still very different from the stances of America because they still have a kind, they're not hegemony like in their approach to Lebanon. They always try to seem like a mother who wants to help. And I don't think any state that respects itself can continue uh, aiding and funding and protecting a genocide. So what the French or what the pre French president is doing now, he's trying to take one little step towards the right side of history after all that complicity. So, yes, thank you, France, but mm. it's a little bit late and welcome back to humanity. Yes, yes, better late than never. Radio Francis, as always, spellbinding. Thanks for joining us on the mother of all talk shows.